I'm going to have everybody pull out the mystery of the messy desk. We're going to kind of jump right in from where we were yesterday. And yesterday you read the mystery of the messy desk on your own. Um, we did not do any coding yesterday. So I'm going to give you about five, six, seven, eight minutes right now to do um, a quicker reread or skim of the mystery of the messy desk. And I want you to code um, and or annotate this time. So you're going to share your thinking in the margin while you're going back through the article. That way when we're discussing both articles, it'll help you remember what you were thinking at that time. Right, Thomas? Okay. And for your viewing pleasure, I have some different images up here, which we will talk about later, but they're both related to the different articles. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see if you guys can figure out which picture goes with which article. All right, so about five to eight quiet minutes right now. Writing utensil, messy desk article, and your coding card. Get started. There you go. write a note to yourself in the margin. Questions, raise your hand and I'll come to you. Are we supposed to annotate? see a lot of great remarks and coding marks that people are uh, marking down. Yeah. It used to be. I thought that the, the links was kind of a better picture because it's near a connection to what you already knew that.
Could I see thumbs up if you're on the second page? Or or past? Okay. So probably about three, maybe three or so more minutes. use all of them. You can pick whichever ones you want and you're going to ask a neighbor or two at your group questions about what you just read. This is where your coding marks or your annotations come in because it helps remind you what you were thinking at that particular point. What was surprising, new, interesting, perplexing, something you were able to visualize, okay? So we're going to spend just about five minutes doing a turn and talk with a neighbor. I realize some of your groups have an odd number. So you might have to have a pair of two and a group of three, okay? You're gonna take turns asking each other any question you'd like from the yellow slip, okay? Make sure everybody has a chance to share um, and respond. And then you can move on to any of the other questions as well. All right, so about five minutes, I'm going to set the timer here, and then we'll come back together as a group. Let's have the person – I'll let you choose. <laughs> you guys pick. So, so what surprised you and why? I'll do that one. What, and what's what are the most important ideas you should remember this in this piece of writing? I just thought that was kind of weird. That, that's really cool. That's surprising. Uh, important habit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh, an important yeah. detail yeah. is that, yeah. 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 let's see, how yeah. – so do you want to write that down or are we just – I'm going to answer you. Oh, okay. To put it over here. Maybe that yeah. she uh, about his past life, but then the idea of because he was so bored that his brother, his brother Tom, holds him to become a doctor, and how that all led up to the new. Um, yeah. Probably that Alexander found me. So you want me to talk to you? And the last like that he was back yeah, because his brother was going to surprise you the most. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, what, 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 what part of the reading was What did you find most surprising? They have like a whole different point of view than adults. Well, this is what you want to Okay. And yeah, that's what I thought too. Because well, sometimes I like it's just easy to see. Right, it was like 
I close my eyes, I can just see some like running around. Like, 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 Ideas. I remember in this piece of music, I think we're sharing over here. Me. I'm just listening. Yeah, we're doing the first one. So I think the important idea is that how he actually became a doctor and like he wanted to look at what he actually left. That how he how this stuff happened came together. Well, I think it's kind of important so that um, people can like learn about the new things that people have Whatever the most important ideas, I, I don't know why down there, there is to up there and the one. What are the important like topics for people to learn? I like the one on the top left, the one like mm -hmm. crazy mold make pets to learn. I think that's funny. And I think the one you know with all the little dots, I think that's um, the, the small it is. part. Yeah. Have you ever heard so of right there, like at the top one, it says, like, like Kayla dress me. They want everything. Well, not like all the time. But, like, they care about me. I accept my my mom does. Not really my dad. Well, when it says um, what part of the reading was easiest for you to visualize, I thought when they were like des describing like the little halos on the bacteria, and it was like a, I thought that was like really easy to like. I thought it was really easy. I'm gonna ask all of you some questions in just a minute. Um, what part of the reading were you able to visualize in your mind? Anybody use the little the halos around the in the mold? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that can have a huge influence on things, right? I really said the weather was perfect for you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know something, Handy Recorder? I like Someone purple. Let's finish that later, please, okay? Oh, and but we're Yeah, done. there's a Handy no, Recorder. No, no, I'd rather have you read. <gasps> Hello. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> have you guys had a chance to chat? Yeah. Turn yeah. and talk? This thing scares me. Um, why is this worth reading about? Why is it important for people to know about this? Because I think about the speckled monster, the speckled monster, because it's one of the most deadliest like diseases, I guess, and it kills a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about yeah. the messy death? Why is that worth learning about, knowing about? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right. Remember, remember, remember that part later. Yeah. Yeah. When well, we're talking about both our kids. Misker has a microphone on her. Look at it. Oh, it's like, hello. Right there. Can you throw it in? And it's really yeah, interesting to me the things that some of you noticed and picked up on in the articles that maybe the author didn't come right out and say. What is that called, by the way, when you read between the lines? Say it out loud. In <laughs> Very good. Um, what vocabulary was new, unusual, or unfamiliar? Anissa. Pencilin or something? Pencilin. How do you pronounce that word? Penicillin. 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 Have you ever taken amoxicillin? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amoxicillin. That's oh, it. There, there you go. That has penicillin in it. What other oh. words? Addison. I couldn't read. Oh. Is the Lysosomes. That's yeah, that's, that's not a word you see too often in, in fifth grade material, right? Yeah. Inoculate. Inoculate. I'm glad you said that. Inoculate appears a lot. Why do you think the author used certain words like inoculate, vaccine, immune? Why does the author keep using those same words over and over again instead of perhaps varying their word choice? Because we talk about that a lot, right? Like, make, you know, using colorful word choice and varying the words you use. What do you think the author was thinking? Haley? Maybe there's no other word to use, and maybe that's just one that you can just use there. Maybe that is the best choice. Emma? Um, maybe because they want because maybe they knew young people would read it and they wanted to like have them like if they use a different word they might think it's something else. Okay. My thinking matches I think where you're going with your idea. Anissa. I think the words are really important, and another word can really describe how it is. Like, True. And if you think about inoculate, vaccine, immune, how important are those words to these two articles? <laughs> how important are they? Ethan? A lot. Like, really important. Because why? Because it's like science, and that's what it's about. <laughs> Do you think the article would be as effective if the author had used other words or kept varying their word choice? Maybe, maybe not. They're definitely important, though, to the meaning. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question about the speckled monster. Why on earth would the author call a disease, a virus, which is invisible to the naked eye, a monster, other than to get you interested. Why? Why isn't it just called the smallpox virus or the virus that killed millions of people? Why the speckled monster? Gianna, what do you think? I think because you get like spots all over your body. Okay, you're on the right track. Who can add to what Gianna just said? She said you get spots all over your body and it, and it kills your body, kind of like a monster. Um, what else could you add to that? So the dots are like a, um, it's like on a chameleon, like there's some chameleons are speckled with dots. Okay. So there are, in fact, markings that are like dots, so we get the speckled part, but why monster? Why that word choice? Because that's really important to the meaning of the article, right? The whole idea. Shakti. It was gobbling up the population, and they were, and, <laughs> like, it was really... Like, why do you say that? I'm sorry to interrupt. Why do you say it was gobbling up the population? Because everyone was, like, scared and trying to find a cure and like everybody was getting infected. And what happened to a great majority of the people that got infected? They died. Right. And we talked about this with European explorers, right? When they came over during the triangular trade. Um, 
prior to the triangular trade, they brought smallpox to um, Native Indians at the time, and that you know wiped out many people on um, these continents. So, all right. What I'm going to have everybody do with your thinking, does everybody have both articles out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, while you're working on this next piece, I'm going to come around and sort of um, probe your group's thinking a little bit more. Okay. You're going to need um, probably a pen or a marker, something darker than a pencil so that your thoughts show. You have to borrow one. I'll lend you one. And I'm going to put an example up here. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Andy, you ready? You wait right here for me. I'll be in my good directions and I'm okay. All right. Everybody's going to get a large sheet of paper because I don't know about you, but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more space than unlined paper. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you're going to set it up just like this. Um, I divided the paper into three horizontal sections and then I made the top and the bottom section. I divided those in half. Up here, you're going to label each square with the name of the two articles. So one will be for the speckled monster, one will be for the mystery of the messy desk. And notice I have the word differences here. What, what organizer do we typically use for similarities and differences, Sophia? Venn diagram. Venn diagram. I've looked at a lot of Venn diagrams lately. I thought we'd sort of mix it up a little. Okay? So your differences, how these articles are different from each other, are going to go up at the top. At least five. I think many of you can do more. I did this exercise myself, and I came up with almost ten for each. So you can do more than five. I encourage you to. When you've got at least five great ideas as to how they're different, raise your hand. I'm going to come over, check your work. And then when I give you the okay, you're going to move down sort of like to level two, okay? Now you're going to compare them. How are these articles the same? And we've talked about when we're comparing text, sometimes finding similarities harder, easier. Harder, harder. It can be more challenging, right? So you're going to have to put a lot of thought into how they are the same. Why do you suppose I let you keep your articles on your desk with your coding marks? Max. Because a How might that be helpful? Because so you might need to find some differences and find some similarities. And Right. Okay, right. <laughs> I'd like you to use the articles. You have to be able to prove your point. If I say, well, Jamie, this is a great similarity here, but how did you arrive at this idea? Jamie will be able to say, well, in the messy desk, see where it says right here? And in the speckled monster, see this part here? They're the same because. So you need to be able to prove your point. We've talked about that with like time for kids and some other comparing and contrasting activities we've done. Once you have at least five similarities, and again, I did this myself and I came up with way more than five. Raise your hand. I'm gonna come take a quick peek. And if I feel like you've used the articles well, you're giving evidence for your thoughts, then I'm gonna move you down to level three. Level three, you're going to share at least three new or unfamiliar vocabulary terms. They might be words you recognize, but words that you've never used in conversation, okay? And what I'd like you to do down here is either in words or in pictures. I want you to show that you know what that word means, okay? And you can use what vocabulary strategy might you use? We use this all the time. We've talked about it many times. Andy. Uh, 
context clues? Context clues, absolutely. And of course, if you need help, you're really stuck, raise your hand or you can quietly ask a neighbor because asking a neighbor is also a great strategy. Once you have at least, at least three, you might have four or five words and that's all right. The last part, which requires using all these pieces together is what big idea or ideas do they both have in common? Thinking about the articles as a whole. Think about theme or a lesson or what both of these authors want you to walk away with. The big idea. Does that make sense, Dushani? For the vocabulary in your own words, does it have to be um, in like one of the packets? Or it, can be, it can be from either article. Okay. Um, in fact, when you get down to these, this section here, I'm glad you said that. Maybe use a little abbreviation or something so you know which article it came from. How you do that is up to you. Okay? So, what I need now, one more question. Um, wait, sorry, what, what kind of your own words are you? You just write the words there and then in the big ideas you, have, you write the definition? Or no. you write how... In vocab, in your words, you're going to choose, I would say, three to maybe even five terms that you don't regularly use in conversation, okay? Words that are, are relatively new or unfamiliar. Write the words, and then either in writing or in a drawing, you're going to show that you know what the word means. Not a dictionary definition. You could use a sentence. You could use a picture. You could use a descriptive phrase. It's up to you. So that I know that you know what the words mean using the context, yeah. okay? And the big, idea. big ideas is what are the main, most important ideas that they both share? Thinking like a theme of both articles or a lesson. What do you think both authors wanted you to know? Like similarities? Like, but yeah. broader than that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why when you finish level one, I want you to raise your hand so I can check in with you. When you finish level two, raise your hand so I can check in with you. Okay? Further questions, comments, concerns? How many people have started looking at some of these photos? <laughs> I tried to pick ones that were not super gory, but with smallpox, it's kind of hard. So um, we'll talk about those again. Hopefully at the end we'll have a few minutes to do that. Could I have uh, the person at each group who is seated closest to me at the moment. If you would head to the round table and get the paper for your group. You're closer. And actually, your group, I'm gonna hand this. Well, I hate getting paper. And you need five, Tyler. Six. Six? How many? Four. Four, Sophia? Yeah. Four. There you go. How many shots do you have? Five. Three. Four. Five. All right. Everybody's starting at the top. Level one, the speckled monster, the case of the messy desk. That's my pen, Leno. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, less worry about the lines on the paper. I'm more interested in your thinking. You can. You should be writing probably within the next minute. Otherwise, you're... no, no, it doesn't matter. Not for this. Phrases is okay. okay. Phrases are Where's okay. middle? Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is so perfect. Right? And you don't have to write. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay.
have a few people. I see Shankar, I see Max. We're already getting some ideas down on the page. John's making good use of his time. That's okay. You're using the text. That's fine. Thomas is making good use of his time. So are we writing ideas? Like things that how we found is, the How is the speckled monster different from the case of the messy desk? What's different about that article? Haley's getting some good thoughts down on paper. It's in here somewhere, right? Yeah. That's the way it is. There you go. Okay. Like he's a scientist and he liked observing stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, because when he discovered penicillin, how did how did he discover that? Well, oh. could he have missed that discovery? Yeah, if he didn't. Yeah. Need <laughs> If he didn't leave the window open. What did he notice? What did he observe that Ethan said? What did he observe that gave him that aha moment? And the little halos. What were those halos? Those were areas where the disease was killed. Very good. So that observation. Could he have just come in and cleaned out his petri dishes and gone about his business? He could have totally yeah. missed it, right? Yeah. But he was very observant. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot. There are a lot. Different. 
the virus that like everyone gets in bacteria, I guess, is kind of just like a germ. A bacteria, you get it, mostly. Like a virus, you can't find out. Yeah. A virus, they don't have like vaccinations for it, I guess. For what? For the viruses, I think. Wait. You can make it go away faster, but it's so fast. You can slow it down. Like it won't cause as much damage to you, but you can not, you can't um, make yourself immune to it. Which of these articles do you think focuses on each? I would say the speckled monster focuses on the virus part of it, because yeah. Yeah. And, and the messy but desk, you think, focuses on? Because infections are like, like, yeah, and sort of how they like find is it. Is this one particular virus that once you get it, you don't do it again? And the messy desk. Usually, viruses like this smallpox is a special case because usually you can get viruses again. Can and you I use the text them. to prove it? Like, does it say virus in the speckled monster? Yeah. What yeah. about the messy dust? Does it talk about bacteria? No, infections. Maybe. Yeah, and the messy desk, I think it also and he does it by accident, look and, too. Look, I like when I was using her text. Bacteria. Let's look for that term, bacteria. I found it here. There you go. You found it in the text. Cross it off, cross I'll be right back. I was going to write that in there, but I have to go over here. We'll just cross it off. Okay. That's fine. Hmm. You're right. I noticed that too. That this one had a lot of this in it. They were talking about like the mummies. And how the ancient Egypt. Why? Why do you think? Well, because like they were showing that this disease has been around for a long time. Yeah, very good thinking. You're right. Because like longer than. What did Alexander Fleming discover? So what medication came out of? Penicillin. Right. Longer. Long. This would have been around many, many years before this. Is this is more around. Like this is closer right. to. Now, then it is. Do you think I could bend him? Sure, sure, absolutely. I think so. It's right there. I, I wanna. Something I wanna put for the messy decks for me over here, but I just can't. Don't know how to exactly explain what I wanna write down. That happens to me too. Um, can you describe to me what you're thinking? Well, sort of, not exactly a disease made of, not exactly a disease or a sickness caused the, uh, Alexander to make a medicine, but some sort of a mistake. Okay, sense. okay. So, like an accident? Yes. Well, you can say that. Exactly what you just said to me. How could you phrase that? Uh... Not he discovered he discovered a new medicine not from disease but from an accident. There you go. He had it in you all along. Rock, how you doing? Okay. Yes. Oh my goodness. Fantastic. Is this you want me to give you a a check? Is is this kind of the same as this? So, but I, I accidentally you know, did, did number five before I did number four here, so I had to. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. That's very observant. Okay, you're good to go. Try to find five similarities. Right, Edward Jenner and Alexander oh, Fleming. Just give me another one. This one talked about like, more about like the old people, like the most infected, or in this one's one. But do you think it's safe to say that penicillin hasn't been around as long, like long 
Yes. Because <laughs> I think he won the Nobel, or didn't it say in the text, he yeah, won the yeah. Nobel Prize yeah. in 1845? No, oh, 1945. So, actually, that one hasn't been around for that long. Gosh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is infinitely older. So this is like ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is a baby compared to that. So. Anybody else need to check? Thumbs up if you're nearly ready for a check to move on to similarities level two. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Any any commonalities or any differences? At all, whether it's about the people, the science they were studying, the the setting, yeah. and this person, his, um, the cliffhanger, what came out of it? You know, a lot of choices. Yeah. And, uh, so it? Yeah, I also did Fleming. Um, he his idea became more well known and faster. Mm -hmm. and so true. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Absolutely. Both of those more. are terrific. Fascinating that as you're working on the differences portion, many of you and your neighbors that are right beside you are coming up with very different ideas, which is awesome. Very, very cool. You will be sharing these, so make sure whatever you write down, um, you're able to share that and explain your thinking. Well, Anissa, excellent. Thank you. Really good job. And I, you know what, not all, not all the kids, you kind of majors parallel to each other. So this is, although they're differences, they're, you know, same type of difference. I don't know if anybody else did that. Thanks. Very cool. Yep, you're ready. Level two. That's okay. And you notice that both of these took place outside the United States, too. Yeah, you can move on. Yes. Mm. What do you mean by this? It happened on Could you be more specific instead of one word? I will come back and check. Yep. 
All right, I'll come around and quickly start thinking about similarities, and I'm, I'm going to get to everybody as quickly as I can. Thank you. Yes, move on. Wait, was they were both about science? Is that um, is that your very best thinking? Kind of. Um, could you be maybe a little bit more specific? Okay. What in science? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good word choice. Yep. Move on. So you need room for one more difference on both sides? Yeah, and I don't have enough room to get that out mm -hmm. Do one up here. Put the and do it over here. You have to do two. You can get off the escalator, Jamie. That's a problem solved, my dear. Just squeeze it in there. Just as long as you see it enough that you can um, share it, you know, with your peers. Moving on to their similarities, which is fantastic. No. <laughs> That's a good question, though, but no. Boys and girls, I'm anticipating that we will probably um, have to finish tomorrow. I see a lot of wonderful thinking, and I don't want to rush people. You still have a few more minutes. But while you're finishing up, I'm going to just throw out um, a few questions, okay? Can you listen to me while you're yeah. working, Addison? Okay. All right. Um, one important question I talked about with this group here is we came across the words bacteria and virus in both articles, yes? What's the difference? We've had both of them in this room. <laughs> What's the difference? Anissa? Bacteria is kind of like there's lots of it in each virus, and virus is like a form of bacteria, and there's like different types of bacteria. Let me ask you this. Which is easier to cure? A bacteria? Right. When you take medicine for a bacterial infection, maybe it's an, an ear infection, or uh, maybe you have strep throat, or something like that, you take a, like a penicillin type medicine, like amoxicillin or whatnot. But you can make it go because, away. right, but because you can make it go away. But a virus, if you, if you, you can who has slow had. It down, but then, yeah, you can slow it down, but. You can't make it go away. It right. Goes, so you can make it hurt less or like, reduce the symptoms, but it goes away. How do a lot of people reduce flu symptoms? What do a lot of people do in the fall? They have soup. Yeah, they eat like warm things, like a lot of fluids. What do a lot of people do in the fall to protect themselves? Get shots. 
the inoculate against a help. very <laughs> common virus. They get flu shots. Right, which is basically you get a little tiny bit of a live flu vaccine. So your immune system so that you're right. To that <laughs> particular kind of flu. You could still get sick. Um, and a virus, like the flu, there's no medicine for the flu, <coughs> is there? You just have to kind of tough it out. So that's why viruses can be so dangerous and deadly, because there really is no cure for them. Um, and they're much harder to tolerate or even get over. So... How do you think accidents can help us out in science? How do you think accidents can be useful in science? Because you would think scientists would be very precise, right? Yeah. Thomas, what do you think? In the story, this guy discovered penicillin just by accidentally leaving a dish out. So, like, I bet I think that like even with accidents, uh -huh. you can you can turn the accidents into something very useful or very like. Yes, and actually, when I was over at Ethan's group, Ethan, what was it you said? I asked his group, why do you suppose the author mentioned that um, Alexander Fleming spent so much time outside? And you said he was very observant. So he really had to observe that petri dish, Thomas, right? He could have totally missed what was happening in that dish, and maybe we still wouldn't have penicillin. Um, if you're interested, this Mistakes That Work book, where I tabbed it, this is all about penicillin and Alexander Fleming, and there's some other medical accidents that have led to great discoveries that are, that are in this book. What I'm going to ask everybody to do right now, make sure your name is on your paper. Okay. Thumbs up if you got to the similarities portion. I will. I will. Um, I'd like you to fold it in half. You're going to put your articles and your coding and turn and talk slips inside it like a folder. And one person at your group is going to neatly Take your table stack over to the round table. 